So welcome to today's Conquer Risk podcast. Uh, my name's Jeff. I'm uh, one of the normals on here, uh, but I'm excited to actually have on a one-on-one basis Martina Beta. She's from our marketing department, and the reason that we brought her on is because after our April Fool's Day joke that involved NFTs and a great podcast that she and the rest of the marketing team put together, uh, then we released about uh, the kind of the brainstorm all the way to, to execution on that April Fool's joke. She's kind of the resident expert at Potomac on NFTs. So uh, we thought it would be good to take that next step and say, let's help advisors who are much like us, much like me, I'll throw myself under the bus, have no, I mean, I really didn't have much of a clue what an NFT was. So we're going to take have a little bit of uh, humor here, and we're going to take and put Matina on the hot seat and see how she does in helping us learn more about this for advisors. Now, I want to add one little thing before we start. Martina, uh, certainly welcome. Um, and are you excited about the podcast? Yeah, are you yeah. excited about doing the podcast? I'm excited. I've been nervous, but I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, nothing to be nervous about, although you are on the hot seat. So <clears throat> that said, uh, we're going to do a couple of things. Um, I I think it's kind of cool as we get to know each of the different parties that help us with the Conquer Risk podcast. Um, you, English is not your first language, right? Not at all. It's my third or fourth language, actually. <laughs> That's That just blows my mind. Um, so the smart scale just started going up. So what other languages do you know? Um, so Italian is my first native language. And then I speak Spanish, um, English, and Portuguese and French. Wow. Okay. Well, there you go. There's a little little extra background for Martina. So um, let's dive in here, right? Uh, essentially, we're going to take 10 questions. We're going to take about 30 seconds apiece for an answer. And let's uh, let's say how we do and deal with this topic. Let's do it. W, WTF or N, NTFs? I mean, N, NFTs. See, I can't even say it right. Uh, anyway, let's dig in. Let's figure out what these things are. So help me out. What the f*** is an NTF? NFT. I did it NFT. twice. This is terrible. <laughs> See, I am not the expert. Go for it, Martina. Help us out. Get us started. So NFT um, stands for non-fungible token, which by definition means, um, so an NFT is a digital asset, publicly verifiable intellectual property authenticated on a blockchain. So that's the overall definition, <laughs> which is a bit hard to understand, but that's the yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And as we get started, I think that's a that's a great first question, right? Because we just we, we do that a lot. We start with the basic definition, and and I want to add something here, which is look, this is none of this stuff is advice. This is high level education. We're not claiming to be experts, so take it with a grain of salt. But let's see if we can help advisors get a little smarter. Here's my first problem. When I first heard about an NFT, I was like, what the hell's fungible? I mean, does anybody else like scratch their head and go, who came up with a word like this? Help me out. What's fungible? So fungible, <laughs> which is a part of the actual name NFT. So fungible is yeah. something that can be exchanged or substituted with something else. And it will hold the same value after all. For example, if I give you a $10 bill and you give me 10 $1 bill, at the end, it's the same value. So we can exchange it and it, it stays the same. However, That's a great example. I like that. There you go. Now, non-fungible, it's right. an asset that cannot be substituted. Basically, it has unique attribute that makes it different from something from the same asset class. For example, a painting, um, real estate, movie ticket, trademark, and crypto punk, okay. crypto kid kitties, crypto everything. So, Oh, God. Don't get me started <laughs> on crypto. <laughs> but I know we're going to have to touch on that just a little bit. Okay, just a yes, little bit. So a little. at a high at a high level, let's move on to another question. Are are NFTs the same as crypto or how are those two sort of connected? I think so, that'll be a good one. Yeah. So NFTs are cryptocurrencies but are not the same as Bitcoin or Ethereum because NFTs are completely unique. They're non-fungible. Okay. However, Bitcoin and, and, and Ethereum are fungible. So that's okay. the the difference but at the same time they are still cryptocurrencies yeah um and, and we'll dig into some specific examples here in a minute um but i think the next question most advisors have is sort of like okay if they start if they get fungible versus non-fungible and and that whole piece 
then it's really sort of what are these used for and why? I mean, I, I, I know you've got a cool graphic to, to help explain the, sort of the pros and cons here, but, but help us out. What are these used for? So there are a lot of different versions um, of NFTs in general. There are art NFTs, gaming, sports, collectible, a little bit of everything. And the sky is the limit on the type of NFTs. However, um, some of them can be used as collectible. For example, back in the days, you used to collect baseball cards. This is the same, but digitally. Hold on, you're making me feel really old now. Like, uh, oh, back in the day, I grew up with baseball cards, man. This is, this is, this is funny, but I, I'm old, so I guess that qualifies. All right, sorry for the interruption. So yeah, so uh, <laughs> one, one way is to be used as a collectible like that, but it's digitally. And another one um, can be used as utility. For example, um, I personally do one of soccer. I'm a huge fan of soccer. And one of them is that I can buy NFTs, cards of players, and then participate in tournament. And depending on how I rank, I can either get Ethereum as a price or other NFTs. So in that way you can keep building more and more and more. Yeah, so that's great. It's basically, it's a different variation of a fantasy football league sort of a scenario. Exactly. I gotcha. Okay, exactly. that's cool. I, had, I, I didn't really, uh, I didn't even realize they were doing that with the cards. I thought it was just the cards in and of themselves as collectible. So that's that's cool. All right. Uh, well, look. it obviously depend. it obviously depend on which type of NFT. Not all of right. them can do that, but right. depend right, on right. the company and and stuff like that yeah okay cool all right so now the obvious question with probably an obvious answer but but who in the hell are using these um and you know what's what's kind of the the primary audience i would say the primary audience of nft in general are the youngest generation um people that grew up with the internet tech savvy individual but then <laughs> if you dig more into the different category like art gaming sports then there are subdivision, you know, subcategories of audiences. For example, I personally like sports, not that much into gaming. So then it, it divides into those categories. I gotcha. I gotcha. Okay. So now we're taking another step deeper, which is, all right, so we, we kind of know the audience. We understand a little bit what it is and, and how, why it's, it's kind of cool for some people to want to do. But how do you actually go about buying or selling an nft i mean what's the what's whoops what's the uh, what's the process there there are a few different ways to actually buy and sell nfts um one of them being you can directly buy them from the platform the marketplace of that company yeah. for example nba top shot you go on their website and you can buy, there's a marketplace and you can buy them there and the other version is using third-party companies and such as OpenSea, SuperAir, and they're among many others. And so those are the few ways you can do it, to buy and also sell. Yeah, so uh, the good old fashioned dollars only work in some places. Um, yeah, this is where it, it almost becomes a whole nother language when you start talking about NFTs. Um, but but at the same time, right, this is all part of the process. It's just, it's it's part of that, uh, Christopher will like this, it's part of the new frontier, right? <laughs> Boldly go where no man has gone before. So, all right. Now, we're again, as we continue down this road, what is it that the creators love about the concept? I mean, this is, I think this is kind of interesting when you start looking at some of the differences. Yeah, there are a few cool ways for mostly digital artists um, that can get some positivity out of NFTs. One of them being that, first of all, there is a platform where they can showcase their art, their unique version of their digital art, and people can buy them. But also, it's a good way because some artists can set up a paying process basically whenever they sell their art, and after that, they can keep track of every time it's being sold and get a portion of that payment, so of every transaction. So that's a cool because they can keep making money throughout the process. That's something that doesn't happen in real life. So that's, that's pretty cool. Right. No, I totally agree. And that was one of the things that I thought was super neat about about the concept, because I, I, I mean, I've always, you know, like we all right, have our relationships. And as you find a particular artist, uh, you know, you realize somebody makes a painting and that's fine and dandy. It's sold. And so they make a little bit of money. But it's 20 years later when they have become a really huge 
prominent, important artist in the sphere, that suddenly that first painting that was sold as nothing becomes worth millions, right? And that's an extreme example, right? But at the same time, they can get a, like you mentioned, they can get a royalty on it every time it's sold, so they can continue to make money on that process. Um, awesome. So let's look at some examples. Let's take a couple minutes, take some time, and I know you've got some graphics here. Uh, let's go through some of these examples, just a few, to give uh, advisors a flavor of what's out there in the world of NFTs. So these are my two favorite. Um, as I said, I'm, I like sports, so these two are the one that I personally um, have. So the first one is one called Sorare, which is soccer cards. Um, I'll have them on the screen so everyone can see them, but here are a few <laughs> of my cards. And then the second one is Top Shot, which I know it's been on the, on the news a lot lately. And basically these are my moments which I get through packs that you basically are either lucky that you get one or not lucky and you have to buy them in the marketplace. So it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, that's uh, like I said, this, this harkens back to the old baseball card. You buy the package and you have no idea what's in it and it could be something super neat or it could suck and it, you just don't know. Um, one of the things that I think is pretty interesting and I had heard a little bit about this. So this is uh, a part of the question and then I'm going to give a little bit of my answer and I want to see your, your thoughts, um, is that NFTs aren't just for these digital images. Right, which was my first blush. That's what I thought, and then I actually started to do a little bit of research, and I see I'm going to give you an example that the Kings of Leon, a, a, a rock group, a musician, you know, a bunch of musicians, uh, have put together an NFT, and essentially what they've done is is they've got like 18 special, you know, golden tickets for lack of a better phrase that that like six of them are set up to do things like special vinyl album releases. Uh, there's w w at least one that gives lifetime front row seats to concerts, right? So it, they're sort of taking that engagement level to a whole new level uh, when it comes to physical merchandise of some merchandise or experience in regards to an NFT. So do you have some examples of that sort of thing? Yeah, one of them is NBA Top Shot. Um, obviously, this is a future plan, but they want to engage more with the people in real life. So basically, in their website, you pick what's your favorite team, and then um, one day, hopefully, whenever you go to the stadium, they can upgrade your, your seating because you're one of the people that it's investing in NFTs, um, or you can get merchandise because of that, or they even are planning on like mentioning your name or having it written somewhere in the stadium of all the people that are doing it. So that's pretty neat. I mean, it's pretty cool to, gotcha. you know, your favorite team is, you're part of it. You feel like you're part of it. So it's, it's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, that, that's cool. Well, we talked a little bit about kind of the last question here. We talked a little bit about why some of the creators uh, love the concept. Um, help me out and understand a little bit about more why the collectors love the concept. I know, again, you've got a graphic that, that you wanted to share. So, yeah. So personally, I like it uh, mostly when I get utility out of it. Um, for example, the soccer one, I get ca more cards or Ethereum back depending on how I do with my own NFTs. But it's also neat because you feel like you own something unique, that you're the only one that owns this little piece. So it's something cool to have, you know, oh yeah, I'm the owner of this card and nobody else in the world has it. So it's something that, it's weird, but it, it feels, it feels <laughs> nice. <laughs> so that's something yeah. cool. And it also has a lot of potential in raising in value. So that's also something right. cool. Well, and, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I think the most extreme example, which is pretty wild, part of this is because the NFT concept is so new, but uh, Mike, uh, Mike Winkleman, uh, he goes by Beeple, is an artist that put together this massive collage, and it sold at Christie's and went for $69 million, which is bloody insane. I mean, I, I, I was like, that hit major news across the, uh, you know, across the uh, United States, and I'm sure probably globally. But, you know, again, some of these, some of the, the folks want to, you know, spend money on whatever. And, and advisors have clients that want to spend money on whatever. The reality is part of the reason for this podcast is, and this is it really, it's time for kind of conclusion. We realize that advisors may not, you know, maybe they don't have clients that are investing in NFTs, but the older clients may have their children or their grandkids, 
you know, playing in this space. So we thought it'd be worth giving a little bit more information around this. And again, I want to iterate or reiterate that this none of this is advice, right? We're just trying to shine a light on something that is affecting uh, advisors and their clients and, and give a little bit more insight to that. So do you have any sort of parting thoughts for our advisors who are listening on the NFT space? I mean, honestly, this one is something new that so nobody really knows where to go, where it's going to go, if it's a bubble or not. So I guess we will all have to see where it goes and, and where it's going to take because nobody uh, knows. Yeah. The sky is the limit. All right. <laughs> Well, on that note, we shall see. Uh, yeah, not only sky's the limit, but the uh, the bottom can can be painful. So uh, it all take all risk uh, in consideration before before going forward with any kind of investment, no matter what it is. All right, so let's uh, let's have some fun. Let's break it out. It's time for a little bit of recommendation, and this is your first podcast with recommendation required because you've only done group podcasts with us. Yes. So. Uh, help us out, Martina. What do you got for us today? So the one I picked, it's BarkBox. So I recently got a new puppy, and I decided... Oh, I want to I yes. see puppy. You have to display the puppy. I'll have a picture <laughs> up here so you can okay. see the puppy. <laughs> but basically, okay. BarkBox is a subscription box for your puppy and or dog. And basically, every month, they send you a themed box with toys and treats uh for your puppy so it's pretty cool because i mean i only got two for now and i have it with me right here and it's so nice because it's <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's it's so well made the treats are like perfect they're nice good quality and they're just all i don't know it's just amazing quality it's very good and the puppy loves well. it so I yeah, well, maybe, maybe that's that's gonna be have to be our next uh, next podcast series is the unboxing of BarkBox. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna throw one out there today uh, that's a little different and it's it's pretty specific. But you know, even if you're not in Arizona, uh, a lot of people obviously travel here and so forth. And so in the Phoenix area, there's a little town called Gilbert, one of those. Uh, you know, uh, smaller areas uh, around the outside of uh, ma major metro Phoenix. And um, there is a place that fat guys like me shouldn't go, <laughs> and that is Peterson's Ice Cream Store. It started back in 1919 in Chicago, and uh, I got to say, they, they have taken, like, everything to an extreme. And what I mean by that is, like, they have an ice cream called Cookie Jar. And instead of being, like, cookie dough, which is just going to be ice cream with cookie dough in it, or an Oreo ice cream, which is just, you know, ice cream with an Oreo in it. Well, no, no. Cookie jar has, like, cookie dough, chocolate chips, uh, chocolate shavings, uh, Oreo cookies, M&Ms. Like, but it's not a massive amount. But, like, every bite is just a different texture, a different flavor combination. So... Yeah, it's it's evil. Fortunately, um, you know, I won't be there that much longer, so I can I can step away from the Petersons. Anyway, I love it. It's great. It's my the cookie jar ice cream is my absolute favorite, and I just had to give them a plug because I, I think it's worth it. Uh, on that note, thank you very much to all of our listeners, watchers, viewers. Our YouTube channel continues to blow up. That's awesome. And Martina will put the subscribe little bell on here, and uh, yeah, do that if you haven't already. We appreciate it. All right, thanks a lot, folks. Bye.